Time for some Patreon shoutouts. Fierlix, Jamie, Fuckhammer, Anthony Bollier, Talia Dickinson, Jonathan Hughes, Sunayama, Noah Bugard, Santi, and Trace. Thank you so much for your support. Rolling in the Mist is a series with fantasy violence, mentions of gore, and worst of all, cussing. Viewer discretion is advised. Rolling in the Mist will be going on a small hiatus. We're not sure exactly when we're going to be out of the hiatus. We're hoping only a month or so. Did We're you? fucking back. It's oh, me, oh. Jason. Pablo. <laughs> Pablo. Thanks, I guess. It's your boy with the dog and them bravo. Did you miss us, folks? Because we missed you. <laughs> We're still doing this? No. <laughs> I missed what could have been. He just scared my sight back <laughs> out of my head. I, I was glasses I was, again. I was thinking of just God. yelling at the mic and everything. And I look at you and be like, that's how you do it. God. God. <laughs> so we're back. It's It's been a little bit, folks. Uh, like every true tabletop RPG group, we tried to get another session going, and each time there was a scheduling conflict. But since, you, since you've last joined us, Pablo is a certified clown. No. Jason finished his documentary. Yes. Uh, 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 I forgot your name there. Pablo, <laughs> Pablo 2. Pablo 2. No, uh, Bravo ended up in uh, The Consultant, now on Amazon Prime. With Christoph Waltz. Check it out. Hey. And uh, Bex, I don't have an achievement off the top of my head. How have you been doing? <laughs> Bex, hey, is still breathing. Golf clap? Hey. Golf clap. Go Against the odds. That's all we can ask for. I'm still here. can ask for. That was such a sad way to yeah. introduce <laughs> you did, did you ask her? I, <laughs> what she I, did before you? I should have asked. Hang on. Cut. Bex, tell me your achievement right now. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Bex doesn't want to talk Wait, about I, it. I didn't want to talk Bex about obscurity. it. Obscurity. <laughs> did I give you that hat? This, yes, you did. I just remember that. Something yeah. else. Though. Bex I, still has the hat. That's the achievement. And Bex remains an ominous mensch, but she looks great. <laughs> still looks great. Hey, to haunt your dreams. <laughs> oh, God. God. <laughs> oh, no. Looking fabulous. Let's move on. So the whole Odd Loot crew is with us today, except for Chris, who was unfortunately sick. But we're not going to let that stop us. We finally got a time when we can all get together. So we are going to get into some new episodes of Rolling in the Mist Season 2. But first, but first, let's recap a because word from our sponsor, you too could be a sponsor for Odd Loot. Give us your money, please. We need it. <laughs> we got shirts now. We got shirts now. I was supposed to give Pablo a shirt, but I, I kind of lost it, so it's somewhere here. Wow, it. fuck. If you me. want more of this, listen. I'm sleep paralysis <laughs> paralysis demon. You can take home to mother, right? Like, so, <laughs> recap. Within the streets of Eden City, our criminal crew, the In and Outs have been going on specialized <laughs> heists in order to take magical artifacts from under the noses of those who have them. Uh, the dogs in this city are <laughs> unrelenting. <laughs> if you hear dogs, that is ambience that we added in in post and is certainly not oh, dog. Is that dog's name in ambience? Let in the comments below, this bothers you. Or this adds really to the story. Spot's just really upset today. Spot, <laughs> canonically that spot Canonically, in our world, that's Ambience is his name. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Watchdog. Ambience. Ambience. So, Ambience. our crew, uh, Leland, the Rift of Hercules, Logan, the Rift of Norse Dwarves, Marty, the Rift of the Kumiho, and Corey Vidales, the Rift of Persephone, have all been coming together for these magical heists. You guys took the Thunderbolt Sledgehammer from a active construction site which we still get quotes in the comments about Corey being like, oh, we're from the crime family. Oh, well, we are. <laughs> got, got to start somewhere, folks. Uh, you all stole the moon rocks containing the spirit of the moon princess Kaguya Hime from the basement of one of the larger museums in Eden City. I and throw a rock. Oh, yeah, he threw the rocks to the moon. Yeah. End of mission. <laughs> <laughs> he skipped that entire arc. Same day shipping. <laughs> you let it happen. <laughs> Same day shipping. God. That was a good one. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Prime. 
And <laughs> you guys met up with uh, Rolling in the Mist alum Otis, who a love. <laughs> that man has no degrees. <laughs> he has a degree in birds. <laughs> Homeless cum laude. Yes. And came face to face with the Rat King, who was attempting to create an army of rats within the sewers of Eden City. Who's now and like a bud? Yes, yeah, like our bud. Yeah, he's Who's now a king. bud? You, you guys king. found out that the Rat King was originally with us. a science experiment of Helix Labs, specifically from Logan's powers. But now the Rat King, who is now just going by the name King, is part of your crew. So with that, here's a little extra theme. Oh, how would have known wait that for the, we did the group. <laughs> yeah, is that, is that we didn't do the mine. Oh, uh, it's, it's an like extra theme reading. for the group. Now, uh, keep in mind, City of Mist Mechanics, because I know it's been a little bit since we played this game, and extra theme tags are crispy, so once you use them, they are burned. So they're <laughs> one and done. Where are all of our food? That, no, not that. I was like looking at the shit we earned. A fucking moon rock and a, and a rat. Like, that's, that's what we got. Rocks, rocks and rats, this place sucks. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we have that. That oh, well, we have, we're I mean, you have your Dante one, don't we have a princess thing? That's, uh, that's, that's the rock. Uh, that's the rock. Yeah. Yeah. I have this. I have Dante's spirit. Yeah. 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 From yes. somebody. From I, fucking killing an innocent. I accidentally yeah. killed an innocent yeah. man. <laughs> you like absorbed him, but now I have a bastard. You're basically you Sal. Literally mm. killed him with kindness. I think you said like everything's gonna be okay, and then you just like <laughs> patted him on the shoulder, and then. I you lived in this world. Killing is a kindness. Wait, and I just remembered. You had the bowl, and you, and you sold, sold it. it. So you had the okay. best, probably the best item. You sold a bowl? I yeah. sold a bow. A oh, bow. Yeah. Less so. <laughs> you get, like, Af money. Af I don't about after you know what I'm saying? So this you, deal won't last. <laughs> you guys have earned uh, many connections over these heists as well. Uh, Corey, you've had your connection with the Olympus crime family after your connection with the Vidalis crime family kind of went to shit after a deal that you were in charge of went to shit. As it and does. So you've been dealing with Maximilian Olympus, the godfather of the Olympus crime family, uh, been getting secret jobs from Minerva Altadana, you've been getting on the bad side of Juno Olympus, Maximilian's wife. And also just kind of scraping against the sides of like Simon Ocean and Donnie Suss's uh, side business. Mm -hmm. But you have your own crime business. I, I tried. I tried so much <laughs> to know Jason taking a big bite of pancake. It's not, it's, not, pancake. it's not coming through the mic. Let us know in the comments below. Do you mind us eating? Oh no, God. do not do that. <laughs> so oh my gosh. Uh, Don't in the mic. Don't do it. Marty. Yes. You've also made a connection with a mysterious figure known as Agent Harvey Studwell, who also gave you the job for the moon rocks, moon rocks oh, but you tricked him by getting some fake moon rocks. Courtesy <laughs> 3D printer. Of, yeah, Logan's 3D printer. Yeah. And so you've been kind of having a rapport with him. You also absorb the spirit of a scientist, hence your extra theme, uh, Dante's spirit, which you uh, used in the previous encounter with the Helix Labs Black Ops team. Yeah, and that's where I burned... Uh shortcut through no that's when the rats were attacking us yeah. yes yeah. well the rats yeah. were attacking and then um yeah turned into a lion yeah because of oh the we like yeah. we, we got just posed yeah yeah, yeah. 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 that that was great yeah, yeah. yeah. good stuff good yeah. stuff check out the previous episodes mm -hmm. classic spoiler this an event <laughs> i just imagined that scene was uh, that cool orchestra it's like some dude playing that song with the kazoo <laughs> 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 I, the, Marvel, old, higher the, old, Marvel. The, the only sound better than playing a kazoo is pretending you're playing a kazoo. <laughs> uh, now with a boozella. Leland, <laughs> you've gotten some new powers. I got rat. And also... <laughs> I got a rat. You got a rat, friend. And also, you are one job away from paying off That's your right. debt. Because... The you, interest rate is a crazy... You were also at the job that went wrong, which Corey does not know about. And oh, yeah. Yeah, as an assassin named Kent attempted to make the job go wrong under the behest of some mysterious employer, you stopped him, but not before, well, someone got caught in the crossfire, and then you threw him out a window, which made the job go wrong anyway. So, bad times all around. And Logan, you have always had the assistance of your sibling, Sindri, but... You have also come face to face with your previous supervisor at Helix Labs, Trent David, who tried that well, Trent, the monologuer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but by the way, what what was what was Trent's voice? I 
You tell us. How about your character? Did you do the reading? Oh. <laughs> I, notes on he did the writing. I did the writing. That's worse. <laughs> That's worse. <laughs> By the way, uh, w when they're referring to the reading before this session, I was like, it's been a while since we played. I'll send out the rules. I'll send a little recap document. It was very thoughtful. And what did I say? You, what, what did you say, Jason? <laughs> when you sent me all that stuff, I looked at this like, oh, Kevin, you're at a nine. I need you at a three. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, if voices are a little weird, folks, or if we're a little rusty on the mechanics, it's because we he haven't shot in a while. I remember it just being. I think annoying. you were very. He was just an, a douche. Yeah, you were very. Douche. Douche. I remember going at Chad. It was a Chad type. with my. But I don't know if he's like. Nathan I think it was just your voice. I think it was just my voice, but a little bit more douche. I, I put a little bit more spit. <laughs> I, I, I'm not trying to sound like a dick, but I think. No, but you made me sound like a dick <laughs> in retrospect. Because yeah. I remember it just being. Annoying. <laughs> that is just his voice. Oh god. my god. <laughs> I missed this. You defeated Trent David and now have him held up inside your secret pocket workshop. Where you punch him oh, every day. We knock him out and yeah. well, we, we, we took him because that globe thing was gonna trap us. Oh, we got out. I took off the tracking device. Like yeah, that. and then yep. then you took him in your bag where you uh savagely beat him every oh. minute of the day. <laughs> beat the shit out of him. Yeah. Is he our hostage right now? Yes. I mean, he is a, yeah, in his bag. You've got him. Yeah, no, you guys are just holding him hostage. Wait, don't we get a perk from him? Logan's got a what? hobby. What? Your hostage? No. <laughs> what not? He's not going to <laughs> <That's, laughs> help you. Oh. Oh, he, oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Kevin, let me take Bad. you as a hostage. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how much you I can get out of you. Good. We got that yeah. dog in us, man. <laughs> God. Dog God. Dog. Can't work to just open up. We ain't the first crew. We don't care. <laughs> this episode's just going to try to do a torture port. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to make you talk about well, the hostile. Before we get into that, speaking of opening up a can of worms, there was one can of worms that was opened up at the end of last episode, and that was Minerva coming up to Kore and telling her some news. The Vidale's crime family may be willing to bring her back. He wants me back. Nani. And so it is that. We come back into the misty streets of Eden City. Pablo, do you have something to say yeah. before we get right into it? Just like some of the mist out of the wood. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> <laughs> Uh, that I'm window. also being, pun intended, tailed, mm. aren't I? Yes. Uh, you got into the car with uh, Agent Studwell, but there is a rat that cling to the frame of the door. Sylvester. Sylvester. Oh, in the car with Harvey we drove up? Yeah. yeah. yeah the rat on the... Yeah, yeah the rat like... I the, oh, and I remember making a joke there was another rat with like a little camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the little, right? the little rat with the camera. the rat on the car with us? No, the rat has the camera and it's on the car. There's a camera rat. He's not camera car. With you. Yeah. He's, like he's, he's on like the bump. Hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah. Cam rat. Got it. Yeah. Cam rat. Yeah. There it is. I knew there was something there. So, okay, I'm being with that, we come back into the misty streets of Eden City. Cars drive past, <laughs> honking their horns in traffic. Smokers smoke at the bus stop and cough into their hands. Smokers are smoking, alligators are alligating. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> And as the camera moves past the uh, smog-choked streets, we come to the edge of town into the hills toward the manor of the Olympus crime family. We're inside one of the meeting rooms. A very important meeting is taking place. Minerva is, uh, not a meeting room actually, this would just be her office. Uh, Minerva is sitting behind her desk made out of the finest mahogany, of course. And seated in front of her is Kore and Leland. The fuck? Yeah, you have been uh, brought in for this as well. So, I'll leave this up to you guys. Of the two of you, who wants to do the voiceover monologue? Damn. He doesn't even know if he was there. <laughs> 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 right, this is going to be so informative. <laughs> Leland, you've been called in for a mysterious meeting. What's on your mind? <laughs> okay, I'll just like... like... <sighs> out of gear. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Did they kidnap him? No, I just, you, you I, I've been so him. out of it, I forgot how I got here. Oh, it's been like about six months. Oh, oh, God. Uh, I wonder what they want today. Uh, please, just give me, just give me some peace of mind. I don't want to work hard today. I'm so tired. Hey, Corey's here. Did you get here? <laughs> he says it all in his head. It's all in my mind. And then like, like, there's like a little bit of silence and there's like, out <laughs> loud, she just hears. Was some... this the, the, was this the wrap up? You guys were waiting for this. <laughs> this is what you wanted. Was it for? worth it? 
Coming back. You know, Dan Ryder was. Are you <laughs> proud of your decision? <laughs> I am. <laughs> Welcome back to Outlook. Minerva takes a sip of her sparkling water before. Oh, a little bit more front. There, there you go. go. There you cool. go. My bad. Minerva takes a sip from her sparkling water before placing the glass down and looking toward the two of you and goes, what I'm about to say does not leave this room. Understand? I'm just like this. Just like arms down. There's a camera in the corner. <laughs> oh, well, no, there's not a camera. There's Spots not a camera. panting, just quiets. As you can probably tell, it is quite difficult to open up channels of communication with another crime family, especially one in another city and especially one that we have a fraught history with. But we have been able to open up some of those channels, and we have recently learned that the Vidales family would like you back, Corey. Now, you have been a beneficial presence here for the Olympus family, so do not take this as us kicking you out. It is, after all, your choice. But we have spoken before that this would be an outcome that you want. And with timing the way it is, the Vidales family has already sent an entourage to pick you up soon from the docks. Leland, you look yeah, hold on. strangely animate. <laughs> I've been seeing this float for a minute and it's been what? <laughs> please, please let this be canonical. Please let this be happening. I can't get it. I mean, literally just grab it like a hair on the floor. Keep going. I just see no. I just see this like hair. I want to hear Leland. Yeah. It's still there. I don't stab it. Just go. Damn it. Get it? Keep, keep, keep going. Say, say it again. Keep saying it. Hold on. Yes, there we go. That's what we want. Is there. You almost got it? You, is that a dog hair? Is it. Oh. Oh. You're, you're, you're just gonna have to do that, but just gonna do it again. So sorry, Minerva. Well, uh, oh as you were saying, as you were saying, Le Leland spends a full minute trying to get yeah, a like, hair no. off of Minerva's suit. Well, what is it in the office? It's, no, a, it's, it's a hair. It's just a hair on her suit. Like, suit. But my fingers, out. my yeah. fingers are too big, so it's like oh, yeah, I'm, all I'm doing, <laughs> all I'm doing is this. I'm just pulling the shirt, not the actual hair. <laughs> I, You're so strong; it's not permanently crunched. Oh, fuck. I'm, I'm just imagining like a like tongs, but made out of bratwurst, like that. <laughs> Well, that happens. <laughs> so that happens. Minerva composes herself once again and turns to the rest of you and goes, Corey, what do you think about this? I'm going to be honest, Minerva. It's it's a little unsettling considering how much time has passed, but I, I would be lying if I said I wasn't curious what Mr. Vidalis would have to say for why he wants to bring me back all of a sudden. Spot showed up. I, I'm so sorry. He's been very agitated today. Spot, Spot is just barking Bro, out the window. He's you know, in the backyard. Yeah. I just anyway. pick him up and throw him out the <laughs> Right through the glass. The backyard. Through the glass. Map. <laughs> through the wall. <laughs> oh my God. No. Thankfully, it, he's it, like, you know. Dark closed room. <laughs> like, yeah, it's a fucking office. <laughs> I will say wisdom that I have gained over the years is that sometimes all it takes for allegiances to be brought back together is time. Many wounds require quite a bit of time in order to heal properly. And I know that the time here, timing here seems sudden, but just so happened they were in the area and this was the safest time we could set up this, for lack of a better term, drop. You understand? Yes, yes, I do. Now, if you wish to go back to the Vidales family, quite frankly, we would welcome that. And Leland, I would ask that you escort Corey safely to the Vidales. Get her to the entourage and make sure that she <coughs> safely gets into the vehicles and driven out of Eden City without any police or other criminals attempting to disrupt the exchange. Do you understand? How soon would you need me to be ready? 
within the hour. You oh. want to go? I don't think it's a matter of want. I think I think I have to go. I th- I have to know. Okay. Okay. But so. before I do, if I go back, I know the relationship between the families is still strained, I'm sure. What does that mean for our business transactions? Well, we can still be in communication. And in fact, the reason I have been putting so much effort into arranging this is because you would be the lifeline between our families. You and I already have a rapport. And once you go back to the Vidale's crime family, you and I will have a channel of communication that we can speak with. Now, we won't necessarily be in the same family, but I hope you understand the importance that you would be the figure that connects both of our families. War is bad for business, Kore. And I think we all want our families to be as strong as possible in the coming days. Agreed. Good. So, the Olympus family will provide you with a vehicle. Leland, you will be driving. There is no one else I trust more with escorting Corey, but unfortunately it will just be the two of you. Do you understand? Yes. Good. So, get ready. Head out to the docks. And Corey, it's been a pleasure having you here. And Leland, this will count as a job. Now, the status of your debt, you only need to do one more job before you are paid off, correct? Then, like, Leland thinks about it for a second, he's like, starts counting. <laughs> he hasn't really been keeping track of the jobs. He goes, Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Then, this is very important that this exchange goes well. And then afterward, you will be a free man. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Smack your desk. <laughs> just, 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 just break on the desk. He breaks I, the I desk. I think it's just the desk. Like, it's just this really <laughs> thick, <laughs> elegantly carved desk. Like, was. Almost 100 years old. Yeah, like. It's so it has It has best mafia boss ever cup. <laughs> That's not <laughs> first the mug. Then mug shattered. Fucking shatter splintered. it. Like, just destroy it. I'm so happy. And I go up. And I just hug Minerva really like. Thank you. Minerva is not a hugger. She just kind of goes stiff as you you go into the hug. And she goes, Leland. Yeah. Before you break more of my things and end up in more debt, <laughs> perhaps you and Corey should go. And then you just grab her lapel and just go. <laughs> Take oh off the hair. <laughs> Take off the hair with a bad shot. <laughs> Jesus, I hope it's not there. Just rip it. So, right. Titty flop. <laughs> 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 All right, Jeff. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. So, like, so, okay, Justin Timberlake. What? <laughs> All they got to do is protect her. Yep. Bring her to the docks. Make sure the thing you were supposed to do. Oh, right. get, and I picked you up and just throw you over my shoulder. <laughs> 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 Ow, my my drink. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get Spot, we're leaving. <laughs> Spot jumps through the broken window, and the, this Let's office go. is now just destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Oh, by the way, <laughs> as we leave, hell you. Yeah. As we leave, there's like a nice impression of my outline. <laughs> like I couldn't fit through the door. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's your outline plus mine. <laughs> How did you get in the door then? He went through the I outline. I just walked through it. Oh, there's already, <laughs> there's already an outline, already so I just went through the outline. Oh. <laughs> Minerva sits in her office, broken desk, broken window, broken door frame, just goes, <laughs> <sighs> okay. <laughs> On to the next thing, and she just grabs a stack of papers. Uh, On the floor? Uh, actually, I, she... Yeah, that shit's not on the desk. is yeah, like this. It's caved in. She grabs some papers from the yeah. floor, and she also grabs a duffel bag. <laughs> and with that, the door closes <laughs> behind uh, There's no Corey. Door. There's no... Yeah. There's no door. Corey and Leland, you guys, like, head down the hall and eventually get to a spot where you can, like, talk. Mm-hmm. How are you guys feeling? So... Now, I put you... I, I finally mm-hmm. put you down. <clears throat> Thank you. So, here's a question. In all honesty, do you really want to go? 
to be honest, I just want a chance to give him a piece of my mind. Who's him again? My husband, you know, Mr. So-and-so. Wait, you're married? <laughs> yes. The face. The <laughs> She gave me a... What? You fucking... <laughs> I just assumed you stole that read. No, no. Her parents. Well, I mean, look at it. It's not even really my... Dude, yeah, you're like, you imagine Leland's face is like... <laughs> like, like when Kane Ben discovered fire. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's like... <laughs> yes. When did this happen? Uh, it was way before we were working together. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. But um, I mean, you you know this family a lot better than I do. Yeah. Do you think that? Do you think that Minerva would push to put me back with Mister Vidalis for any bad reason? <clears throat> It's actually a good question. Would I know like Minerva well? Like I know the 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 boss, but like the other family members, like my <laughs> relationship with them, you would say. Let's do an investigate. Do you have any tags that are for like knowledge of the family or like awareness or anything you like do that? The my fist? One. No. <laughs> work my done. fist have done quite a bit of stuff to get information. Uh the thug. Former former mafia fixer? That's yeah. Cool. Uh big guy in the room? No. No. Uh, no, that toughest guy in town, dude. Just, just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because that that I think that plays towards your relationship with the family. Invulnerable coat. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me the coat on the day of my daughter's wedding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the coat. All right, cool. But uh, yeah, I'll use uh, former mafia fixer. Cool. Plus one. Damn nine. Nine. Ten. nine. Dang. Ten. Okay, so that's uh, one clue. <laughs> he was like, "Fuck." <laughs> so, what, what's your question? Um, what were you asking? Me again? I was asking, like, do you trust Minerva's whatever her motivation would be to be like a good one? For would she want to hurt me by putting me back with the Vidalis, even though she said it's just for like you know business? And, and then I guess my stuff. question would be then to add to that is, what what would what is my relationship with Minerva? Like, how well would I know her? To ask, answer this question. Would the, would, the, would the question be, uh, what do you know of the history? Of, does Minerva have a history of fucking over people? Yeah, there, that's it. Oh, yeah, there you go. So More Minerva less. is the head strategist of <laughs> yes. the Olympus crime family. She does not do <clears throat> anything out of the goodness of her heart. It's only for the family? Yeah, it's for the family, for the business, for the money. I mean, I, I just here's here's the thing. You got like a 10 on that? Mm -hmm. Sorry. No. No problem. I was like, she's leaving. She's, <laughs> she's like, that's not what that's right. What I'm no. so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was just trying to get comfortable. Yeah, right. Min Minerva is a survivor. She is a strategist. So she's do what a tactician. To, to... Do what it takes to win, to stay yeah. on top. So what she said. Lannister. Yeah. So, you know, she's definitely not trying to get Kore back with the Vidales because, like, oh, Kore has, you know, been yeah. working with me. She deserves, you know, something good. Like, you know, she she did say like this would make a great channel of communication between the Vidales and the Olympus family. Perhaps, you know, that could lead to like better ties between the families. But also I'm gonna tell you this right now, like Miner Minerva always Minerva has... will always choose the best outcome for her and the family. Exactly. Okay. So what Leland does is he picks up Kevin the DM, holds him in front, says, What he said. Oh my god. He's getting too out. he's getting too strong. He can rip through the fourth wall. Oh my god. He couldn't get any more physically strong, so now he's just like I'm temporally breaking reality picturing <laughs> Leland okay. stuffed into a dead. So wall. so with no, that, I, I would like to also build up a role myself. Okay. What are you trying to do? So with what Leland shares, now I would say, I mean Corey has like a relatively strong bond with the crew, but obviously it's still just a crew. This is not like family, family for like friends necessarily. I would like with the experience that Corey specifically has had with Leland, you know, she's paid, she's she's treated him like um like yeah, like a like a person in all the conversations 
through the season and whatnot is I would say it's been pretty friendly. I would like for her to use actually this this whole personality logos card that I haven't used all season, but for this moment I think would fit very well of like can can I ask you if if she won't look out for me, can I ask you to? Like just you. Oh you know. Yeah. Hmm. And my response, can I roll and use my fist for that? <laughs> <laughs> no, that oh my fist. god. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, basically, I guess, she wants to know my loyalty with her now. Yeah, I mean, uh, mechanically, are you, like, are you trying to like? I mean, this can just be a conversation between you and Leland. Yeah, do you just ask? Me? No, but uh, she, she, she wants to get that bonus points. <laughs> just, just like, is it is it possible to have an advantage of like, this is this is not me trying to lord over you. This is me generally like imploring you. If I can't trust anyone else, not even like my husband, obviously, can I trust you? I'm asking you. Like, is that Corey asking? Yeah, that yeah. That's that's gonna be that's gonna be Corey asking that. Yeah. So Leland kind of just takes that in. He's like, "Well, I don't screw anyone over who doesn't deserve it. You haven't really done anything wrong to me per se." <laughs> <laughs> Does that like a like? <laughs> so, what do you think, Fist? <laughs> right. I know, I see. <laughs> We've done plenty of jobs together. You're not the worst person I've worked with. Oh, well, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the sack. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, I think that's a, a good uh, spot to transition. So, <laughs> you, <laughs> you and Leland are heading off. So, meanwhile, back in the sack. Uh, Back in the sack. Back in the sack, Back then. The sack. That's, you all know why. That's why I made that joke. Yeah. I'm the worst person I've worked with, and then cut to... The sack. Yeah. The sack. With, within this Dexter's lab... Uh, <laughs> pocket dimension. <laughs> pocket dimension. Uh, Sindri is, of course, at the computer. She has, like, five different monitors up, you know, working on some blueprints here, uh, playing Candy Crush over here, all, the, all this different stuff going on. Uh, Logan, you're walking past her. You know the hostage slash captive that you have in this lab. Do you just walk right past Sindri and are heading over to him? What's what's Logan up to right now? <clears throat> I can't do the voice as well as I could have a sore throat, so try to talk normally. Good Shut look. up! Yeah, good look. <laughs> yeah, all right. He's like, why did I install a microphone on that dog? <laughs> She's just watching dog videos. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He's like, look, look, this one's barky. Yes, I know. <laughs> uh, calms me down. She, so um, I take a seat up next to her while she's doing that and just kind of put my feet up. Well. Just, just awkward silence. So, what are you doing? Working on a couple of different things. After we got that new roommate, I figured I could try expanding on the series of tubes and pulleys and levers that you got for King. How's he doing, by the way? <laughs> and I look over to her, right? I just see the entire wall just, like, swarming with rats. He's doing all right. <laughs> is, is King allowed in the pocket workshop? Oh, okay. So, so there's just a bunch of rats, Ratatouille yeah, like, style. Like, they're all helping, they're helping Sindri with her. <laughs> yeah, like, what's King himself, the big juicy rat, yeah. doing? Okay, remind me, oh, he's yeah. eating Oreos. Is he like, like is <laughs> getting he, juicier? Is he just one big fat rat when he's relaxed? <laughs> yeah. Or is he like always uh, a body of rats? Like, does he, I, I imagine he would be like, like Al Bundy when he's home, is just like his bouncers on bugs just sitting in the couch, <laughs> yeah. watching life go by. King himself is just one big fat rat with like a Norse rune on him. Uh, sometimes he's in like rat mech form if he's like playing Xbox or something like that. <laughs> Thank you. I was hoping that we look over and he's got a headset playing like. I don't know, fo a Fortnite? <laughs> <laughs> Overwatch. <laughs> yeah, oh, thank you. I was thinking yeah. Overwatch. Yeah, yeah. Where's my fucking hill? <laughs> <laughs> my fucking hill. <laughs> I said to pack. <laughs> okay, 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 we'll go with that, we'll go with that. I look over and I'm like, well, he's, uh, I need healing. He's adjusting, I guess. <laughs> like a young teenager would. Who fucking snipes in defense? <laughs> He's always getting into it. God. So, um, 
I like our he's, a, <laughs> he's all right, I guess. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what to do with all this. I mean, am I his father? I already have kids, so you're an adopted. Not like you spend time with them. Yeah, <laughs> you're a pretty bad father. I think. Yes, there, there's kind of a, a quiet that comes over Sinjir when you bring that up. It goes, and how are they doing? Well, last I talked to them, Mother wasn't all too happy about me asking, but from what she told me, they were they were doing just fine. They started school. I heard they're doing pretty good, but uh, another year I'm not able to be there, so just another day. So, what's the plan then? I mean, we have been having a lot of fun and, you know, messing with all this. And you know me, I'm good just kind of hanging out here in this little space. But, I mean, have you ever thought about what next? Yeah. But at the, as I, like, I was on talking, I just grab a rat off. Because it's just like, a, <laughs> put it down. Aw, he likes you. Please. <laughs> well... The plan was to always just provide for my family in one way or another, whether my wife wanted to or not, and at least find some way to get her to forgive me. And then I look over to um, the holding cell. <laughs> I imagine it's like down like a hallway in this pocket workshop. Yeah. And see if I can um, get rid of these fucking nuisances that have been plaguing. I don't want my wife to see as a monster anymore. Yeah, that was the next thing I was going to ask about, like, the plan moving forward. Not the monster bit. I think you're always going to be a little monster. And, you know, she she emphasizes little there because she's still got those, like, two inches on you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Sindri leans forward and goes, we do need to figure out what we're going to do with your former boss and the holding cell. And, like, I know you and your friends are more of the, like, kind of people. And... It cuts to I tell you, I was like, uh, cut to Logan. I'm like, let me just tell you this, Logan. If you kill him, just let me know. I know a good spot we can throw some men on. <laughs> and then, and then it comes back to me. <laughs> God, I'm really good at mixing <laughs> on my job. Like baking. Well, I think it's time we talk to our prisoner. Not just myself, but the rest of the gang. Because I got a feeling that this guy is more than involved in every way. To me, to Leland, hell, even, I guess, to the... Was he going... Was, was there... I'm trying to remember right now. Was uh, was there any time... Oh, no, yeah, sorry, my bad. Well, stupid. It was the first fucking uh, arc, the hammer. Duh. Uh, everyone. <clears throat> I do believe these guys are involved with both myself and the underworld. So I think we should probably let them have a crack at him as well. Then I get on my phone, and I'm like, God damn it, Z-Mobile. I'm not picking up any reception. <laughs> and then I just like, Cindy, do you mind sending out a text to the group of asking them to come in? We need to uh, talk to our new roommate. Sure, I can do that. But, um, you know, if you're... Wait, why, why am I asking if you're, like, up for criticism here? I always say... Listen, <laughs> you you might want to talk to him by yourself first, considering your kind of shared history. There might be some things coming up that, you know, you don't want said in front of all your coworkers. And then I look at the fourth one. I look at Kevin. and I'm like, are you trying to get me to do something? And then I look back to the thing. <laughs> and I said, yes, I'll go talk to him. I don't know my own volition. Excuse me. <laughs> Go all right. All right. I'm trying to put you on tracks here, but okay. We're breaking the fourth. Hey, if you got to do it, so can I. <laughs> so I go over to him. I um, I think I feel like yeah, dark. You, yeah, you head so down I the hallway. There's the lights. like like dark holding cells. Uh, I'm I'm kind of imagining like the Thor sequel holding cells of just like like glass doors, yeah, like so. heavy white walls, and like still like strangely high tech. And as you come down the hall, you see Trent David there. St uh, is he still handcuffed in the yeah. cell? Yeah. Handcuffed in the cell, still a little bruised and beaten, still, like, I sitting mean, there. I'm, I'm, I would think you would have him, like, fucking kingpin. Like, just, he's all clambered, like, down to, like, where he can't even talk normally. He just has a... Metal around you mean Hannibal Lecter? No, no, no. no. Not, like, have you seen, like, the new Hellraiser? 
No, I haven't seen the new. Brandon Jackson's contraption yeah. where they're just all locked up, like, like needles not are a, digging uh, into this yeah. guy. Like he's like, yeah. like, he really wants to know, like, I can kill you, and he's just, like, just a lab nerd, like, French. You know what I mean? <laughs> my, my, my primary, my primary <laughs> offense is gun. Yeah. Oh, he's a will of it. We've got weapon manufacturer. He lives. He's a weaponsmith with a hacker for a sister and a mafia fixer. He's also mafia. just very angry. About and we all have ties this. to the underworld. We are. We will get we get the job done by any means necessary. So continue. Hand, so handcuffed in his holding cell, Trent David is sitting there, and he looks up at you as you walk in and goes, "Well, well, Logan, it's good to see you again." Hello, Trent. So. How's it going? Have been able to watch the news lately. Usually, I start my day with a and cup I of shock coffee. Him. Just, just what? what? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. oh, so the, so the handcuffs have like a. Oh uh, yeah. Sh- okay. All right. <laughs> I'll let you talk first. Then he bounced back real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you like. By now, there's nothing left. Kevin, it's a husk. Kevin, you, you need to go real meta on this. I'm going to get a taser room. Got your seat, too. Okay. He's back real fast. He's like, okay. It's <laughs> not his first time getting Whoa. He's got him into it now. <laughs> He's built a resistance. I imagine there's been a lot of off screen shockings. He's <laughs> like, going to be part of a DLC. We're going to follow his God. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I, I, so I'll, I'll give you guys what you want. So he gets shocked. He goes, ah, for a full minute, pisses himself. And then after... <laughs> there we go. What a bitch. Still likes it. Still likes it. <laughs> Drools a little. And then after some heavy breaths, puts back on that douche smile and goes, so you want to talk first, Logan? No, I just wanted to see what would happen. Good job, Cindy. <laughs> I, I start I start like walking around the, the thing as it... What in the flying hell are you guys doing with my technology? We cut over to the Rat King. <laughs> the, the Rat King's Overwatch Two game. Oh, uh, cool! You can play as Captain Marvel now. <laughs> that's Fortnite. That's uh, Fortnite. <laughs> I don't. I don't game. <laughs> it shows. If you can believe the camera to explain yourself, <laughs> now, believe me, they get it. They get it. Let us know in the comments how you feel about that. <laughs> or like name five games right now. <laughs> Uno, backgammon. Uno flip. <laughs> Marty, yes, you're in the car so with Agent Studwell. Okay, make just, down. just, just, what? Just driving around. <laughs> I, I will say, Marty, what, what's what, what's what's on your mind as you're like uh, driving around with this guy? You guys have just kind of been like shooting the shit, just talking about like sports and cars for the moment. Well, wait a minute. So, most of you play video games. How do you play? Um, you ever play? So, if you ever play this game called Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza, it's like it's a card game. <laughs> well, I'm driving right now, so I can. Play a hard game, but do carry that around with you. What? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, you know, honestly, a lot of pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to buy a watch. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, Marty. A man like you, I would have expected you to have watches, a, a deck of cards, like regular ones. You, you seem like the kind of guy that, like, has a magic trick up or an ace up his sleeve at Wait. any point. Who's this? This is Agent Studball. Uh, no, the guy he's been no. flirting with. No, we cut over to that scene. Oh, no, Pay attention. Because Trent, Agent Studball, something to say. They, <laughs> they sure do. <laughs> gonna fucking kill you. <laughs> What's I'm sorry. I feel like Trent should have kind of like a Keanu Reeves type. Very, very, very. No, 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 no. Here. Okay. Well, <laughs> Next session, you're going to go watch the videos to remember. <laughs> God. Anyway. anyway yeah. Did you yeah. do the reading? A- so. He, he, he seems amused by it though. Like he, he, you, he, you pull out this like game. He's like, I'm behind the wheel right now, and it's nice that you have those games for the all time. Do you actually have watches in your jacket as well? You want to see something? Okay, see any watches here? You don't. No. How about now? It's covered in one. 
Oh my god. Yeah, a little sleight of hand. <laughs> what is this word? Yeah, a little sleight of Remember, hand. Remember, you're John Mulaney. John Mulaney. <laughs> yeah. John Mulaney, not John Lovitz. <laughs> it's different. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, does Marty have to do that when he's trying to find his way out? <laughs> John Mulaney. John Mulaney. <laughs> I just stop mid conversation. Marty Gunhead. knows that he's putting on a voice. Uh, oh, Marty knows. It's all a front. <laughs> he's the bait. Yeah. Adrian Studwell smiles. Not the voice. The voice. You're a man of many surprises, Marty. <laughs> and let's pull off here. I want to grab a cigarette. You smoke? Um, only on the weekends. I don't know why I said yes. It's fine. I no. Well, for the for the face, he's why he's only on the weekend. My my, my father is well. You know. So I, def- I try not to. It, 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 <laughs> no. I don't smoke anymore. I used to. I just really don't want to be here. So I am just talking. I'm very stressed. With women, <laughs> I am smooth as marmalade. By the way, you is it the rat? That's like really, he's like the rat's cream jeans. <laughs> <laughs> the rat making fun of. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Agent, Agent Studwell. Pulls off the road into a gravel patch. You're along one of the like man-made rivers in Eden City, and as he pulls off, you know he stops the car. Are there, you of the city. For- oh, of course. There we are going to make out. Sudwell <laughs> smiles and stops the car and turns to. <laughs> turns to me. Yeah. Oh, turn right to a- listen. You've been dancing around this all season. <laughs> <laughs> Marty, how about this? Be gentle with me. <laughs> it's been a long time. Hey, you're, bruised. you're a real forward guy, <laughs> and also a man of mystery. Quite a uh, quite a two sided coin there. I really know how to treat a girl. Listen, I don't know what. <laughs> He's so I, am I I'm drunk? Be I don't here. know. <laughs> I usually don't do anything like that. Oh, after first, I've had hey. a cigarette, but uh. <laughs> Join me along the edge. Watch this view with me. Let's talk and Christ. see where the night goes. That's fine. Get me out of this fucking car. <laughs> <laughs> you get out of the car. Okay, and so before we continue, I do. I did want to ask you for all the bullshit. Um, <laughs> you which is mind the content. I I promise. We start the show now. Okay. <laughs> so, oh yeah. We hope you enjoy the pre-show. Just so, half hour in. We <laughs> get to decide that we were in the parking lot where we always meet. The talent yes. people. Yeah. <laughs> and. I gave him the rocks then, the fake rocks. Yeah. And then he's like, let's go for a ride. Well, no, you gave him the rocks early. No, he already, he already jammed with the rocks. He came back. Yeah. So I gave him my money to beat him. Yeah. And then he said, yeah. Well, I think he just showed up to talk with talk, you. Talk with me. Like, now, I think, like, the, the money is yeah. So, yeah. He's here to tell you about what you said. Oh, and he's, it's okay. So yeah. now I'm just being told for the info. Okay, we get out of the car and he says what? Yeah, the car. You're on this like patch of gravel past this old fence, looking out onto this man made river and past that more of Eden City. It's getting near the afternoon, near dusk, so already there are lights and tall buildings being lit up against the fog that is so ever present here. There's a small chill that goes through the air that Agent Studwell doesn't notice as he's wearing this, like, full, like, trench coat and, like, fedora and his whole usual, like, agent gear. Takes out a pa- uh, takes out a pack of cigarettes, lights one up, turns to you, and then goes, Oh, right, you're dead. You sure? I'm fine. I don't want him to smell it on me. You're right, though. I have been, uh, keeping track of your dad. You signed him up for an ex- like experimental program, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the wind. Mm-hmm. Are you schizophrenic? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What, what happened? I'm already. <laughs> you told me what happened. <laughs> it was. It was uh, your little fox. <laughs> little, my little fox. Oh, yeah. yeah. Take a recruit. So, training seems so it's a beautiful I movie. did, though. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I, yes, that's right. Then thank you for the fun. Yeah, well, I hope you don't mind. I did check in on him. He's doing all right. Kind of do, but, you know. Part of my job, sorry. Part of my job is, like, yeah, looking the classified I materials. Don't. You go. You don't get any closer than me. You understand that? You're a handsome guy. You dress well. You work hard. I respect a man like that. But you cross my father, and I'll toss you down the red ravine so fast, you'll go down harder than you can say, Look out, Roadrunner! <laughs> 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 Marty, 
but it's a threat. He still comes down from whatever he's on. <laughs> Marty, I can respect that. I respect you. You're a hardworking man, too. We're just in different industries, of course, but we gotta work together. But you ever thought about what you're gonna do next? Hopefully sail off into the sunset on a grateful universe. I mean, a, uh... <laughs> Sorry, I'm, uh... Just, yeah. Nice. Uh, you know, yeah, just kind of kick back and enjoy a stogie. You know, Honestly, that's a cigar. pretty romantic image right there. See anyone else on that boat? Give you a hot bother. <laughs> you're, you're easy on the eyes, aren't you? But uh, <laughs> I was thinking about someone a little bit more buxom, a little bit more blonde, a little bit more... Middle class, take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> middle class, <laughs> and a little less married, you know. <laughs> Chicksy's like, oh. <laughs> you say a little less married. He doesn't understand you talk about Corey, so he does like a little finger wag real quick. Uh, takes another. Uh... <laughs> what? He's like, well, I was talking no about you. Oh, he's doing yeah. that. Yeah, no ring, and goes, all right, I understand. <laughs> he finishes up his cigarette and drops it onto the ground. He goes, you're, you're a man of loyalty. At least from what you've told me, you work well with the, the crew you've got. And, you know, these last two jobs, have been doing pretty all right. And he's like leaning in closer as he's talking. And he goes, honestly, Marty, I'm glad I met up with you. You're a uh, you're a good contact, and you feel something press up against your chest. Oh, and it's a pistol. I love good thing. Yeah, but I don't appreciate being conned. Let's talk about those rocks, Marty. Was that okay? Yeah. Point my Talk about the. Let's talk about those rocks, because uh, boys in the lab have told me there's nothing going on with them. They're just a bunch of rocks. You're welcome. <laughs> we cut over to Leland and Corey as we were walking. Did you guys it? So I had. I've, I've always wanted to ask you this since we're in private. Yeah. Do you think Marty's gay? <laughs> you know, this is the 21st century. No, no, and... it's not a problem. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, wait, wait. Love is love. Love is love. I mean, are you interested? No, I just I always look at him. I go, I wonder if he's interested in me. <laughs> <laughs> the way he looks at me. Leland, Leland, Leland I'm going to be honest with you, honestly. Mm. I don't think he could handle you. You're a lot of men. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are in this old-fashioned car. I assume Leland's driving. Oh, am I? Oh, yeah, I'm driving, right? Yeah. Oh, I, sorry. I said we're walking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, uh, we, how old-fashioned is this car? Oh, it's like... It feels the... It's got the white walled uh, uh, tires. Yeah, it's got the white walled tires. <laughs> okay. The so... Sleepies. This is how I drive it. Yeah, you know, we're not talking about like a jalopy, but I like, need like so are, model. Are we are we getting in the car? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We get in the car, but obviously I'm too big for it, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna fucking Flintstone this. Do <laughs> <laughs> it. Cartoon. I don't know. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna says the voice actor. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is like I try to get in. Like okay, get in the car. Buckle up. Cut it. <clears throat> Spot. Oh. Give me a second. <laughs> I, 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 I open the hood. Is it a top hood or is it like... Yeah, it's a top hood. Yeah. Cool. I get in the back. And I start charging. <laughs> oh my God. I gotta start pushing it. <laughs> I thought as I start running, pushing it, I jump up and I jump into the seat. God. <laughs> just, just the worst mangled up job in this car. After you land, I'm like, oh, there's the 
keys. Oh, you got the <laughs> I look at him, it's like, like now I got my bed, just throw a bell out. <laughs> I'm like a tic tac. <laughs> the car owned by the Olympus family can be used by no one else <laughs> as you drive through the streets. The afternoon slowly turns to evening as shadows creep across the buildings and the tarmac, and eventually you get closer and closer to the docks. As you're heading forward toward the meeting spot, there are no workers, no boxes being moved around, but you do see a half circle of three black cars, headlights off, but from this distance you can see silhouettes hanging out around them. This is the spot. And then I like smash my foot through the thing to make the car come to a stop. <laughs> Big trench through the concrete. <laughs> through the car. By the way, my weight is so heavy that like the car is driving like <laughs> 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 Yeah, you know, but you need a Jeep Wrangler, my guy. <laughs> I, I feel That's like you need a Ford F one fifty. There was there was one <laughs> cop who was like, That can't be illegal that can't be legal to drive. But he doesn't so, want to stop. <laughs> it, like, yeah, it's like I don't know what law I can give you a ticket for for that. <laughs> like Corey Corey, di Corey yeah. disappears in the car, there's just this big old hulking guy that's sticking <laughs> yeah, it's like if you were pulled over, what would he do? Like, like an inch of the of the fucking um, of the stoplight is like going over my. Head. Oh my god! I want to say before before we get out of the car. By the way, the the hood's closed, so whatever you say is out in the open. Oh okay. Well, I mean, like I could say it quietly. Yeah. There's like enough distance, but just Leland. Mm. I don't know what's gonna happen out there, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't get scared often. I am feeling a little scared. You want to stay behind me? I just want you to be ready. For whatever. Got it. Then we get out of the car. And I rip it. <laughs> <laughs> That's on purpose dog ambience. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> just, just in case, I rip the door handle off. And just have it like on the side, just the handle. No, 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 like like the whole door. Oh, the whole like, I, the door. Like a shit. Give, give me a quick change the game. <laughs> in case I can't rip a door. Yeah, that, that's that, that's what change the game does. Is you're like creating a story tag oh, like car door. Yeah. See, I'm gonna make you roll when you had a fucking <laughs> do that shit. Roll for the door. Nine. So so no tags used, but still nine. <laughs> so, so yes, you have story tag car door. Cool. cool. <laughs> Great. Was like well, there's an old. Oh, uh, sh they should. Hmm. They're right over there. Oh, right over there. I can grab. Don't worry about them. Just, just right in front right of your thing. You've seen them before, people. Don't act like you haven't. <laughs> anyway, they. Yeah. Like I just like stay behind this door. So, Corey, Leland, holding your car door shield, just mangled this car in a single trip. You walk forward. A cold chill creeps in the air as you see. Some of the Vidale's enforcers, these men in like, like graveyard gray suits, uh, standing around. Even from here, you can see like the guns at their side. And then you see a single figure in a in a scarf and like gloves, and you can tell as the rest of the enforcers look at him. This is a Vidale's consigliere, mm -hmm. one of the more on top guys. Mm -hmm. Usually these guys are in charge of like districts underneath Anatoly Vidales, but it looks like they sent out like someone important to make sure that this exchange, you know, went through. You don't recognize this consigliere. He, yeah, it's been a little bit since you've been in the territory, but as he looks at you, he's got this like close crop, like <clears throat> black hair that's like slicked back and like just uh, like a single nose, like a uh, poking out over the scarf. He lowers the scarf and looks out and goes, Miss Corey Vidalis, it's good to see you. Glad that you could make it to our meeting. Are you ready to go back home? Thank you, Stephen. Yes, it has been a while. Uh, yes, yes, I think it's time for me to go home. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Leland will be coming with me, though. Oh, yeah, after all. He's your payment. The rest of the enforcers stand straight, hands at their side. And the consigliere notes, like, look on your face and goes, Oh, 
Were you not informed? Well, Mr. Leland over there, he was the one that fucked up that exchange. It wasn't you. And knowing that, and seeing that you brought him here, everything's gonna be squared away. Now, I am a little concerned that he's not in handcuffs, and in fact, he is carrying a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Carrying a car door? <laughs> what appears to be a car door? <laughs> the consigliere turns towards you and goes, uh, Mr. Myers, I believe? See, uh, people ready. <laughs> oh, <I ain't> ready. <laughs> people much high on the food chain than you have set up this little uh, trade-off. So that way you'll come with us. You'll be <clears throat> properly, well, placed on a path of redemption for what you've done. I'm sure after a few jobs for the Vidales family, they might, uh, you know, let you go. I mean, first, we gotta rough you up a bit. You actually cost the Fidales, uh, quite a bit of money from that fucked up exchange back then. But, uh... uh here's the thing. Honestly, I thought he was gonna be tied up for us to come with. The fact that he's not, and apparently armed, makes this a lot more complicated. So, he starts... Uh, taking off his gloves and like lowering his scarf and you see the rest of the enforcers reaching toward their guns. How complicated is this gonna be? Gloves. Oh, oh, he's taking off the gloves. Oh. Oh, no, he was mid-motion. Okay. About to be out of wire him. Um, okay, so... I don't look at you, I'm just staring just at him. Just well, okay. bacon. Real quick, we cut over to Logan. <laughs> Logan. <laughs> you ask me a question, and then you keep shocking me. We both know you deserve it, but continue. You know, Logan, there's one thing that was real hard to work around back when you were at Helix Labs. And that was that you were so smart. When you're focused on your work, your gadgets, or your heist now, oh, you so smart about it. You focus on them. You look at it from all the angles. But the thing with you, Logan, is that you're so goddamn smart that you never think Am I being dumb about something else? At this point, you know, Helix Labs has been sending out these relics through the city, seeing who bites, seeing what happens, making every dumb dipshit in this city a lab rat. And standing here in this magical laboratory, you never stopped to think. Am I also a lab rat? Computer, Helix Labs admin phrase, head scientist in charge. All the lights suddenly turn off, go reg. You hear? Admin passphrase accepted. Welcome back, Mr. David. And Trent looks at you. And he smiles. Where'd you think you got this bag, Logan? Now, let's have a real conversation. His hands fall off. And he takes his arms out of the, uh, the handcuffs. And as he brings them out, he goes... I noticed the little biometric handle ID you had on your gun. Real smart. But me, I like to cut out the middle man. And his arms start breaking apart and turning into inbuilt cyborg assault rifles. As he stands forward and the door to the holding cell slowly starts to open. And so 
as Trent David rises with his arm guns, as Corey and Leland stand uh, around a bunch of an armed enforcers, and as Agent Studwell points a gun at the con man who tried to con him, that is where we're going to end this session. Tune in next episode, Rolling in the Mist fans, as we see how these people get the hell out of these situations. Whoa, SpaghettiOs.